So um, let's try to evaluate um, the limits for um, functions of several uh, variables. Uh, so it's not really that different compared to uh, functions of single variables. Okay, so we kind of like use the same concept, just that in this case we are dealing with uh, two variables where we have um, the x and the y. So let's say we are given the limit um, as x comma y approaches zero. Um, is it zero? No, as it approaches pi comma pi, okay, of uh, this function x uh, sine. Um, I say this is x plus y divided by 4 okay so when we are evaluating just a matter of if, uh, substituting and again as we substitute we should make sure to say we don't we don't have some a form we don't have some that's indeterminate such as maybe 0 over 0 or perhaps infinity over over infinity like that okay so uh, if we have if direct substitution gives us such we need to do some uh, we can do some algebraic manipulation or we can also use some some other tricks that I believe that we are able to work with either uh, by replacing like either by substituting with um, uh, let me say polar equations or maybe using the squeeze theorem is still going to work out so let's try to attempt to use um, direct substitution so if we substitute derivative in that one like our x is pi so like we have sine pi pi sine so here again we have pi here plus pi divided by 4 this simply gives us pi uh, sine gets to pi there, okay, 2 pi over 4. This turns out to be pi uh, sine. Uh, what do we get? We get pi over 2, okay. So pi over 2 is simply 90 degrees, and we know that 90 degrees is what? 90 degrees is 1, like sine 90 degrees is 1. So it's more like you're saying pi by what? By 1 giving us what? Giving us a 1, I mean giving us pi. So this is equal to what? that's equals to pi right there okay so that's how you go about that one let's try to look at another example um, so let's say we let's say the limit as a uh, x y approaches the origin in this case 0 comma 0 um, let's say we are given x to the power 3 minus y to the power 3 there divide by um, x minus minus y so for this one uh, if you try to do um, if you try to do direct uh, substitution you're going to get something that's indeterminate you're going to get 0 over 0 and that's what you're trying to avoid in this case okay so now um, how are we able to do this one so one thing I'd want to remind ourselves uh, one thing I'd want to remind myself and you who is watching this video is that this is a difference uh, like when you take, when you have this arrangement like uh, remember to say when you have x squared uh, minus y squared, we say this is a difference of squares, okay? And you write it as uh, x plus y, then you have your x minus y right there. So that to, I'll call it the difference of squares. And how does it turn out? So it's like your x to the power 3 minus y to the power 3. Uh, this is simply equals to x minus y, okay? Open bracket there, you have your x squared plus, um, that would be like uh, your x, y plus your y squared like that so we are going to substitute with that one there instead of using uh, instead of using um, this here we are going to use what we are going to use that okay so these are some of the things that we do like if you have something that's indeterminate uh, you just try to do some manipulation and eventually you arrive at the answer that you're looking for so this is simply x minus y uh, you have your x squared plus your x y plus your y squared Okay, this is divided by uh, your x minus y. We are still talking about the limit. Um, your x, I mean, your x comma y approaching 0 comma 0. So you, you observe to say this part, this part goes and that part goes. And what do we end up with? If we substitute with 0 here, this is more like you're going to have like 0 squared plus 0 by 0 plus zero squared which gives us what which gives us a zero here so this is simply um, goes to zero okay that's simply what we are supposed to do okay of course uh, you might also want to try to use other methods but um, what you're going to get um, is simply one and the same thing so let's say we have the limit 
um, as x comma y approaches 0 comma 0 um, then they say the function we are given is uh, x squared minus xy divided by um, root x minus uh, square root of y square root of y there okay so what I would want to do here is that um, without even wasting time I'm just going to multiply this by its conjugate okay so the conjugate of that is simply um, x squared no, 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 no. Yeah, the conjugate of the denominator is simply uh, square root of x plus the square root of y divided by the square root of x uh, plus the square root of y like that. Okay, so now this is going to turn out to be the limit as uh, x comma y approaches 0 comma 0. This would be like uh, you're going to have... So for this part here, uh, I think I'll just factor the x in advance. So it's like I have my x open bracket x minus y like that then I'm multiplying what I'm multiplying root square root of x plus the square root of what square root of y divide by so this here what you have is a difference of two squares okay it's a difference of two squares so what you have on the denominator is more like you have like your square root of x squared minus your square root of what y squared which just gives us x minus y and we observe to say this part goes and that part goes and this ends up being what being um, a zero Okay, so that's how we go about that one. So it seems we are very fast, but it's because the questions are straightforward, I guess. So uh, let's say we have the limit here um, as x comma y approaches zero comma zero. Um, let's say our function is simply x squared y squared plus x to the third uh, y to the second minus five divided by. Uh, 2 minus um, that's 2 minus xy so I want to evaluate at uh, 0 comma 0 so what it is here is that uh, we are going to try direct substitution okay so in this case uh, direct substitution is going to give us like if we substitute here what, what you're going to get is like 0 squared multiplied by 0 squared minus 0 to the third multiplied by 0 to the second minus 5 divided by 2 minus 0 by 0 what do we get we get minus 5 over what minus 5 over 2 and that's the solution there minus 5 over over 2 which is simply 2.5 okay that's how we evaluate that one um let's try to look at another example uh let's say we are given um something like the limit The limit um, x comma y approaching zero comma zero. So one thing that you have to remember is that um, evaluating the limit and finding whether the limit exists or not, there are two different things. Okay, so it's like for for evaluating the limit, you are it's just more like you are substituting. You're trying to find out what value you get after you do the direct substitution or after you do the algebraic manipulation. You see what you're going to get. When it comes to the limit. What you do is that you want to find out what is happening to the function because our f of x, y is simply a z. So you want to know what ha what is happening to the function of z as x and y approaches some like some coordinates that are given. That that's what that's like that's the key. Okay. So let's say we have this function x squared y over um, x squared plus y squared there. So what I would do here is that. Uh, I'm going. I'm going to try to, to to use. You can try to use. Um, let's try to use. Uh, like we replace using. Uh, we substitute using uh, polar equations. And what are those polar equations? Am I talking about? So it's like we know to say our x is simply equals to r cos what, r cos theta. My y is equals to r sine what, r sine theta. Okay, so substituting really it can be a bit tedious sometimes, but if you if you if you know that what you're replacing with you are not really changing the meaning, you're not really changing the question. Like it's really one and the same thing, just that it appears a bit different. So when you substitute there, you're going to find that uh, this will be written as um, the limit. Okay, x comma y approaches zero comma zero. So it's like we are going to have three here. Then that would be like r squared uh, cos squared theta. Then that would be r sine theta 
divide by this that you have on the denominator is simply what is simply r because i mean it's, it's simply r squared because you know that r squared is equal to what x squared plus y squared so what do you do factor out the the r okay so uh this would be like r to the third uh cos uh squared theta sine theta there divide by r to the second there so this can go and that can go so what you remain with is like you have your three r cos what uh three r cos three r like you have cos, cos theta there cos squared theta by sine sine theta so you know to say here in this case we are not talking about the limit as r is approaching what as r is approaching zero so if you substitute with zero here what you're going to get is a what is simply a zero okay so let's try to look at uh, the last example uh, on the part for evaluating limits okay so now let's say we have the the limit as um, x comma y approaches 0 comma 0 of uh, let's say the function we are given is x minus 1 squared multiplied by ln of x divided by x minus 1 squared plus y squared okay so now um what i have here this is simply equals to zero okay that is equals to zero but would want to show why and how it is equals to zero so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to try to apply the squeeze theorem here so one thing that you have to remember or to remind ourselves about the squeeze theorem is that uh, a squeeze theorem just works it works in this way such that you have like it's like you have a function f of x okay f of x that is less than or equal to let me say uh h of x okay that is less than or equal to uh g of what g of x so whatever is happening to this function is same as that's happening to that function and same as that what is happening to this function so it's like what is happening to these two functions is the same that is happening to this middle function here so it's like we have this middle function that is a bit complicated in the, in this case my this is i'll call this my more like my h of x comma y and in this case since we're talking about multi variable function let me write it as f x comma y less than or equal to h x comma y less than or equal to g uh, x comma x comma y like that okay so the more complicated function is my h of x which is this one here then i'll try to use this one and this one because they'll be much simpler and i'm going to, just going to get them from this same one that i have here so how do we come up with that one so the thing is that uh, what i'm going to do the first thing that i have to do here is that i'm going to simplify this by saying okay my x minus one squared i say divide by um, x minus one squared there okay say squared plus y squared i'll multiply by what by ln of what ln of x okay so what it basically means here is that uh, this here is my h of x comma y okay so what it means is that um, looking at what i have here remember to say when you have sine or cos we know to say sine and cos they fluctuate between negative one and what and positive one but for this one i'm going to say it fluctuates between zero and what and my ln of x ln of x can be anything okay it can be it can be a big like we, we can't really talk about negative so it's like we are starting from zero because of that function that i'm using there so here on, on the middle i'm going to use x minus one squared divided by x squared plus what plus y squared less than or equal to what ln of x okay so what it is that what is happening to this function and what is happening to this function here it's a uh, like wait um what is happening to this function and what is happening to this function is one and the same thing okay so whatever that we evaluate for this one and whatever that we evaluate for this one is simply to simply give you one and the same thing so here what it is is that uh, here you, you we can choose to make a conclusion i can say okay because because my f of x comma y which in this case is my is zero uh the limit is equal to zero as x comma y approaches zero even is up the same applies for that one if you don't want to do that i can just do the cross multiplication here i'm going to have like my x minus one squared plus y squared okay we are multiplying this by what we are multiplying this by um we are multiplying this by 
by ln of x this is still going to give you a zero and that's simply how you apply the squeeze theorem on that question and uh, that's how you go about evaluating uh, limits um, in the next video we'll talk about how we determine whether the limit uh, of a function exists um, at a given point or not thank you very much for watching